So the enemy doesn't want us to hear this, but it would be good. Matter of fact, it'd be good if them kids hear it. Hey, them big kids, bring them back in here. They got more gum, just the small ones go out, okay? Tell the big ones come back. Amen. Are y'all blessed to the Lord? Amen. All right, we got a couple of scriptures for you to take our text from 2 Corinthians 10 and Isaiah 26. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10 first, verses 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In Isaiah 26, verses 1, 2, 3, Isaiah, the fifth evangelist, in that day, Shall this song be sung in the land of Judah? We have a strong city. God will appoint walls for salvation and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation which keep the truth may enter in. Thou will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. So we want to talk about how to win an invisible war. Come on. Tell somebody, I want to win an invisible war. Now, I didn't say how to fight an invisible war. I said how to win an invisible war. Because everybody's fighting, but not everybody's winning. He said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, but we do war. Tell somebody that we have an enemy. We have an enemy enemy that's doing everything he can to stop you from walking in victory and walking in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have an enemy that's working 24-7 to keep you from walking in the power of the resurrected Lord of glory. But watch this now. But the Bible tells you last days it's going to darkness going to cover the earth and gross darkness of people. And John said the whole world lies in wickedness. Let me tell you something. Have you noticed that sin becoming more sinful now? Have you noticed that violence is on the increase? There's a big, let me, just in my lifetime, I could notice that when I was a teenager in school, if we had a fight, we would just fight, you know, just see who the best. And if you got too much, you know, if you're beating them up too bad, the other boys and girls pull you off. That's enough. You done got it. But now they will put it on the internet and they want you to kill them. You, you see how that happened in one generation? See how, one, how Satan now invading the minds of our children now, not just to get even, but to kill him. Not just to try to, you know, the, the whole aroma, the, the arena of warfare has shifted to a whole nother level. It's more intense, there's more anger, there's more frustration, there's more violence. And it's on the increase because of this invisible war. Are y'all with me? But let me tell you something. Did you know the devil don't even want us to know that we even have to fight? Do you know why the devil don't even want you to know you have to fight? Because if you knew the truth, Satan knew if you knew the truth, you would win every battle. Satan knew if you knew the truth, you would win every battle. It's the truth you know that makes you free. Satan does not even want us to know we even have to fight at all. That's why his first attack is not your body. It's not your money. It's not your family. It's your mind. He's working on your mind because he understands how to fight spiritual warfare. And one of the reasons Satan is so successful is because most of the people that are saved and born again They still walk by what they see and how they feel. They're still influenced by their feelings. When you offend somebody now, you'll know it. Because people are easily offended, and that's how they they, 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 they govern by their feelings. They're not governed by their faith in God. And so Satan knows how to manipulate people, 
how to get in their thinking processes to keep them living a defeated life, a discouraged life, to keep them angry. Satan wants to magnify everything that does goes wrong in your life. He wants to make you think everybody's after you because whoever controls the mind controls the man. You see, people of God, Satan and his invisible army are not to be taken lightly. We fight against an invisible army that's more powerful than any army you can see. They are more powerful than the natural armies that you see. And they're using sophisticated weaponry, and they know how to fight. See, in a natural war, in a natural war the army that had the most sophisticated and advanced weapons can always defeat an army with conventional weapons. Some of the latest technology now, they'll use stealth weaponry. They have weapons now that cannot be detected by radar. Some of the, the advanced fighter jets, they know how to be undetected with radar so they can get an attack on the enemy before they know they're there. Satan is using ste stealth technology against the body of Christ. He's using so advanced technology on us and we think that we it's the other person because we have not detected he's behind it. He's the one that we happen to fight against. Are y'all with me? Now look at 2 Corinthians 2.11. Lest Satan should get advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. Satan loves ignorant Christians. Satan wants you to think the person is your problem. Your pastor is your problem. See, he don't want you to know he's behind all of it. He said, don't be ignorant of his devices lest he get an advantage of us. You see, Satan will get an advantage of us if we're ignorant. Because his devices, somebody say his devices. Yes. Satan devices are his thought out plans and strategies. His attacks against your mind, against your life. Satan, while you up here in church, Satan is trying to strategize something to lose your joy before you get home. He deliberately working against you. So when you get home, he will make you doubt what you got while you were in church. As a matter of fact, Satan knows what you get when you're in church. How do you think he knew how to attack Jesus? When the Lord Jesus Christ at the Jordan River, being baptized by John the Baptist, the, the, the great God spoke from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. See, sometimes God wants you to be tempted so you learn how to overcome him. But what's this, what the devil said, if you're the son of God, he heard God say he was. But if you heal, how come you still feel that little? If you heal, how come? You see, he always wants to try and make you doubt what God has told you. He, he is a mastermind of deception. You do not ever argue with the devil. When you argue with the devil, you've already lost. Satan has had thousands of years how to manipulate your thought processes. He knows how to deceive you and make you think he's not even fighting against you. He knows how to attack you so accurately that you don't even realize you're under attack. See, most Christians don't even know it's devil, it's Satan that's messing with them. Satan used stealth weaponry. He's trying to hide. So you, because when you see him, you'll know how to defeat him. Now, watch this. Look at 2 Corinthians Let's look at it again, 2.11. Lest he get advantage of us. See, he wants to get, if you don't know how to fight him, he would have an advantage over you. So that's how he, he used deception. That's how he deceived Eve. Eve was deceived. He deceived her. He simply hid. He hid in a snake. He will hid in, in people. It'll be Satan using people and you think they're your friends. You see? Now watch this. She didn't even realize that she was deceived until she doubted the word of God because the first attack is always against your head, against your mind. Now watch this. There's, there's a couple of things you need to understand. The worst mistake any Christian can make is to think you don't have to fight an invisible enemy. That's the worst. He wants you to think that he don't even exist. He wants you to think that other people are doing it to you. He magnifies everything that people do, but he minimizes what God does in your life. Second mistake you can make is to allow him to cause you to doubt the word of God. 
Satan is after the word of God in your heart. What did I just say? Satan knows if his word is not in your heart, he can defeat you. A young girl cannot remain pure and chaste and live a holy life and be a virgin if she ain't got the word of God in her. A young man cannot treat people fair and respect people if he don't have the word of God in him. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. See, Satan's after the word of God in your heart. What did I just say? If you don't have his word in you, he can, he can manipulate you and make you do anything he wants to do. Okay? Are y'all with me? Satan cannot attack us directly because he's spiritually dead. That's why his first attack is always against your mind. So it's important that we know how to overcome all of Satan's devices, his thoughts and his plans and his strategies. While you're in church, he's strategizing against you. He's working against you. We have to be sober and be vigilant because our adversary is going by the roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And Satan, I've seen this happen so many times when I was growing up through the years, I didn't know it. I've seen young people in church, a young girl, you know, for instance, she was living a holy life and all of a sudden she got saved and then she got pregnant. See, Satan will do that to you. Or you get ready to do something, your life turned around, all of a sudden something breaks, something happens, an accident, Satan will do something in your life. Because he knows how to stop you from getting to where God wants you to be. It's not, stuff just don't happen. What I just say? No, there's a reason for everything to happen. So let's look at something. So how does Satan deceive us? 1 John 3, 8 and 9. This scripture right here has been a puzzle to me for more, so many years. I remember 35, 40 years ago, I couldn't even comprehend and understand it. But as I grow in the Lord, I begin to see and understand how God works and how Satan works in our lives. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Listen, whoever is born of God, look at that, does not commit sin. For his seed, somebody say seed. seed. His seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now that's a powerful, that's, you need to get this. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin because his seed is in him. See, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. He that commits sin is of the devil. What does it mean by that? He that commits sin is deceived by the devil. Watch this. How many know whoever you sleep with, you're going to bear their child? There's some, I watched on TV the other day, a woman had five different men, you know which one was the, child, the daddy. Watch this, but only one can be the daddy. I don't care who you slept with, only one can be the daddy. See, if you got God's seed in you, you're going to produce life and joy and peace. Watch this, but when you got Satan's seed in you, you're going to commit sin. Because when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. When it's finished, it brings forth death. See, it's easy. Let me tell you something. It's easy. Not the sin. Just don't listen to the devil. See? Just do not accept his seed. Because he that deceived has, Satan has to deceive you before you can bear his sin and raise his deaf child. See? Because if you got Christ in you, then you, can't, you won't conceive Satan's child. Are y'all with me here? See, Satan has to make you stop loving your husband before you have sex with him. I'm trying to get you to understand it. See, lust, people just don't commit adultery all of a sudden. Somebody had to be pulling on them. Come on, y'all, talk to me. They had been working on you. They're treating you nice and giving you flowers and telling you your husband ought to do you better and, and all this kind of stuff. See? See, it's, Satan knows how to manipulate you so he can stop you from trusting God. Because if you, God says, I keep in perfect peace, you keep your mind on me. 
Are y'all with me up in here? Now, Romans 6, 16. Can we get that? I don't know if I gave you that scripture. Now, Romans chapter 6 and 16. It says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself, service to obey, his service you are to whom you obey, for the sin and the death, obedience unto righteousness. Okay? Now, whoever you yield yourself to, his servant you are. If you yield to sin and Satan, he'll make you cuss your mama. You yield to sin and Satan, he'll make you take a gun to school. See, you have to yield to some spirit before you do what the spirit wants you to do. See, people just don't automatically just bring a gun to school. They dreamed about it. They heard about it. They felt about it. They saw it on the internet. They see, Satan is wooing you all the time. I know I'm talking to somebody. Because see, if you understand how Satan, his devices, don't be ignorant of his devices because his attack is against you. Because he knows he can't overcome you until he first deceives you. Say that Satan has to deceive me before he can make me sin against my God. See, that's what he did to Eve. God didn't say that. It ain't really right. See? Are y'all with me? See, Satan knows we don't do things unless we first think about it. You don't do things unless you first think about it. Say that you don't do things unless you first think about it. See? So that's why Paul tells us to cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You, everything goes to your mind you don't have to think about. what I just say? You don't have to think about everything that goes through your mind. Ain't that right? Something you shouldn't even think about. Just don't even think about it. Just don't, even, don't let that cross your mind. See? You cast it down. So did you want, you won't do it if you didn't think about it. Whew. Glory to God. You cast it down before you have time to conceive. See, the longer you think about it, the more it has time to conceive. See, reject it before it has time to bring conception. Because when it's conceived, it's going to bring forth sin. Because when you think about it, you get to a point of no return. When the feelings kick in, there's something when you done start played with it so long. There's something when you done been in it so deep, it's kind of hard to get back. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to keep it clean because I'm using physical examples to show you how spiritual principle work. Satan got to drop his seed in you before you can conceive sin. And when it's conceived, it's going to bring forth death. When lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. When it's finished, it brings forth death. You can raise somebody else's baby that you didn't want to have a, a baby, a child with. And Satan does that a lot of time to people. You raising stuff now, having to deal with stuff now that you didn't want to have to deal with. Wow. Wow. Every plan, every strategy, every product of the devil designed to deceive us to believe in a lie. So you can destroy your faith in God. Now, watch this. He wants to do that to make you get your mind off the victory. See, we don't fight for the victory. We, we fight from the victory. Amen. See, Satan knows we already have the victory. Come on, come on. That's why he can't defeat us without deceiving us. He has to get you out of your wealthy place, get you out of your safe place so you can sin against God. When you content, I don't want what you got. See, when you're content, you can't tempt me to get what you got when I like what I got. Amen. Satan got to try to make it seem like what he got is better than what you got. And so therefore you get deceived. He is a master of deception because he knows he can't defeat you without first deceiving you. You see, ignorant Christians are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They, they don't know who they are in Christ. They don't know they're more powerful than the devil. See, Satan don't know, want you to know the greater one dwells in you. Say this, I have power with all the power of the devil. See, but Satan just don't want you to know it. He don't want you to know how to operate in it. 
because when you're ignorant of it, you can't do it. If you don't know it, what you don't know can actually hurt you. You are the blessed of the Lord. You have power in you, but Satan got to woo you down and try to camouflage and make it seem like you can't do it. Say that whoever controls the mind controls the man. All right. In order to win spiritual battle, you have to know who you are in Christ. In order to win spiritual battle, you have to know who you are in the Lord. You have to know who he is in you. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. 1 John 4, 4, look at this one. It says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You have overcome every devil in hell. When Jesus overcame, you overcome. You have him in you. That's why Satan had to deceive you so you won't think that and believe that. The greater one dwells in you. Say the greater one's in me. He is in you. Watch this. The life of Jesus is greater than all the devil's power. His life is greater than everything the devil has against you. Now watch this. Look at 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, 4. For whoever, talk, say, talking about me now. Come on. So whoever is born of God, what? Overcome the world. And this is the victory to overcome the world, even our faith. If you are born of God, you are automatically a world overcomer. That's why the devil has to deceive you. He can't afford not to mess with your head. He don't want you to know you're a world overcomer and you are now his master. You are now Satan's master. He don't want you to know that. He, he trembles when you come against him. He has to fake it and make it think you can't resist him. You have overcome him because the greater one dwells inside of you. Who is he? Look at that. Look at this. Who has overcome the world? That is born of the Spirit of God. Tell someone, I'm an overcomer. Say, I have already, say, I have already overcome everything. The devil trying to make me overcome. He has to deceive you to make you think you got to overcome it when you've already overcome. You're wasting time trying to overcome what you've already overcome. You're trying to fight a battle that's already been won. Why fight a battle that's already been won? Because Satan don't want you to know it. Because most common Christians go by how they feel, how it looks, they're influenced by their feelings more than their faith in God. Wow, wow. We walk by faith and not by sight. Get to a place like Paul, these things don't move me. Get to a place where Satan's tricks don't matter no more. Whew, are y'all with me? Tell somebody, it's time to believe the word of God. See? The Lord is our refuge. He's our fortress, our God. It's in him that we trust. Sure, he deliver us from the snare of the fowler and the noisome pestilence. His truth is our shield and buckler. When will these scriptures become real to you? At what point will you begin to act like God's working in you and stop believing what the devil told you? How to win an invisible war. Look at Isaiah 26 and 1. Now watch this now. This is really powerful here. In that day, this song shall be sung in the land of Judah. How many know that's the land of praise? Amen. We have a strong city. Say a strong city. Strong. We have a what? Strong. Watch this now. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. In other words, God is going to appoint salvation with walls and bulwarks. Bulwarks are trenches that's dung around a city. In other words, you got fortified. When you get saved, you got walls the devil can't penetrate. You got trenches dug around you where angels are strategically stationed up around you, then the demons can't come against you. He has to deceive you. He has to make you think you can't win so you can let down your guard. That's what he did to Job. When the Bible said, when the sons of God are walking before God, he said, Satan come among them. And the Lord said, where are you coming from? He said, from going to and fro in the earth and up and down in it. And God said, have you noticed my servant Job? 
and the devil said, you put a wall around him. You got a protection around him and I can't get to him. Satan knows you got a wall around you. That's why he got to come against you and do what he did to Job. And that's why Job said, the thing I greatly feared has come on me. Your fear will let down your walls. Because salvation is a strong city, a fortified city. God is, he did not leave us at the mercy of the devil. He did not defeat the devil and leave you at his mercy. When he defeated the devil, he took your foot and put your foot on the devil's neck. You have to understand who it is that's in you. You can win this battle if you stop going by how it looks and how it feels. Feelings change. Things shift. But the things that are not seen are eternal. If we're going to fight spiritual war, you got you to gotta man up. I went in the military, but I know this. I won't be in no foxhole with no coward. If we fight the army, I don't want you in no foxhole crying. They shooting at me. What I'm going to do? I, don't, I want you to fight. I want you to aim your weapon at the enemy. You got demons coming at you, and you fighting and scared. I'm a, how you, you better go on. You better stop. You know how you do. He said, in that city, this song shall be sung. In the land of Judah, we have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulrocks. Let me look at the second verse. He said, open the gates that the righteous nation shall come in. Open the gates that the righteous nation which keep the truth may enter in. How many know we're the righteous nation? We are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. God made his own son to be sin for us who knew no sin. We might be made the righteous of God in him that we may enter in. Other words, you enter in when you know who you are in Christ Jesus. You've been authorized. You've been deputized. You've been empowered to be a soldier in God's army. You're not a coward. You're a child of the living God. Stuff gonna happen. But you can't quit. You can't lay down and tuck your tail. You got to resist the devil because you're winning the battle. Who told you you wasn't winning? What signs are you going by? You ain't winning. Who told you you're not winning? Are you going by how you look? How you feel? Feelings change. You got to believe God. Tell somebody, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Say, I used to be a loser, but I got born again. When you become born again, you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old thing passed away and all things have become new. See, watch this. Look at that third verse. Here it is. God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in the Lord. If you want to have some peace in your battle, you keep your mind stayed on what God said. Sometimes pain be racking in your body. Let me tell you something, people of God. I'm not immune from attack. I just look good. I just know how to fake it till I make it. Let me tell you, the devil attacks me more than do you. I've been through what you've been through. I know what God can do. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I had to get in my closet sometime and turn my face to the wall like Hezekiah because the devil trying to kill me. If you spike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. He don't want you to stand because of what we're preaching up in here. He wants to make us out of a lie, but God's word is true. The devil is a lie. You shall live and not die. You are a child of the king. You are more than a conqueror. You've been washed in the blood. You've been redeemed by the blood. You cannot quit. You got too much in you. It's going to get worse. But we're ready for it. His grace is sufficient for every, cha every challenge. Are y'all with me? God said, keep your mind on him. You keep it here. And then he said, watch this now. Stayed on him. And then the word stayed on means to lean on, take hold to. In other words, when you're under attack, keep your mind on your captain of your salvation. See, the trials and tribulations are designed to get your mind off of God's power. See, but he said, but I keep in perfect peace, keep your mind on my power. Are y'all with me? 
Come here, son. Come here, Elmo. Let me show you something. Watch this. Now, here's what's happening right here is, go behind him. You are the Lord. But let me tell you what I got there. See this? I don't want him to see his answer because I got so much going on with him. See, I don't want him to know he wins. If he could turn his eyes and look to Jesus, he'll see he's there with him. But I don't want him to see that. I don't want him to, I, I, I don't want to beat him up. I don't want him to know he can win. But see, I don't want him to know that. See, but if he just get enough sense to himself and turn around and realize. <laughs> but long I can keep him preoccupied over him. <laughs> he, he can keep his eyes on Jesus. See, Satan got you so stretched out on this little stuff right here until you can't see the truth. <laughs> no matter how bad it look, or how bad you feel, trust him with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding because God is faithful. He wants you to have a test, a trial you can't handle. If it come to you, he got an exit strategy. He knows how to help you get out of it and know how, because he's faithful. He will not let you have a test or trial you can't handle. But what he got to do is he got to keep you from seeing the answer. He got to keep you, got to keep you like a dog chasing your own tail. And the rabbit doesn't run down the road, but you chasing your tail. See? Are y'all with me? Because watch this. We give power to what we think about the most. What I just say? You need to see this. Our lives move in the area of our most dominant thoughts. What you think about the most will have more power over you. If you keep thinking about how they hurt you, what they've done to you, when you see them, you're going to want to hit them. They say, what I do to you? See, you've just been thinking about what I'm going to do when I see them. See, because whatever you think about the most controls your life. Why do you think you say, I keep in perfect peace, keep your mind on me? Because Satan's attack is always your head. Your head is just like a, watch this right now. Do you realize anybody here got a television on them? Got a, a radio? You ain't got, it. you might have it on your phone. But watch this. There are airwaves, radio waves going through the air. But if you turn on the TV or the radio, you will pick up those waves in the air. You can't see those waves. The, the waves in the air don't just come in there when you turn your TV on. It's going through the air all the time. It's just when you turn the TV on that you be able to have a reception. See, your mind is like a television. Whatever channel you got it on, there's waves going through your mind all the time. Amen. 24 hours a day. That's why in the Bible, not the Bible, in the hospital, they don't unplug people till they stop their brain dead. Because, see, you, you be up the hospital, you still got waves running through your mind, through your brain. Satan knows how to get through your brain, your processes. That's what he's doing 24-7. You're on the wrong. Like Mr. the old kind TV had that no. Y'all don't remember that. See, Satan will find a channel in your mind. All that static going through your head. And he'll find a channel where you can tune in to. Next thing you know, you done shot somebody, done hurt somebody, done stole something. Because he, he, he found your channel. 24-7. Got to know how to cast it down. Ephesians 4, 27. Are y'all with me here? I'm almost finished. Can you give me a few more minutes? I'm trying to show you how to win. Ephesians 4. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place. Watch this now. To the devil. If the Bible tells us neither give place to the devil, that means we don't have to give place to the devil. If he said don't do it, that means you don't have to do it. The word place, the Greek word topos, opportunity. You open the door. You mad at your hub or mad at your kid and the devil going down your street and you cussing and fussing. You open up the door. Say, devil, come and help me whoop this person. Come here, help me kill him. See, you give the devil opportunity when you lose your focus. You be wondering, I don't know what come over me. Something just come over, I don't know what come over me. Well, you open the door to the devil. You give him opportunity because he loves misery. He loves anger and frustration. And when you're thinking crazy thoughts, you let the devil magnify your thoughts and make it worse. Because you don't do nothing unless you think about it first. 
<laughs> That's why I don't have a discouraged day. I've been in the ministry now for 50 years. Y'all ain't going to see me depressed. I know how to change the channel. <laughs> he keep me in perfect peace whose mind stayed on him. I know how to encourage myself. Hallelujah. Stuff going to happen to you. Why not you? You have a bad day. Everybody ain't going to like you. So what you going to do about it? You got to know how to bless the Lord at all times. You got to know how to pray for people that despise and use you. You can turn the tables on the devil. Don't give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. Tell somebody we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm almost finished. First Peter 5, 8 and 9. Everybody know this one? He says, 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober. Be sober. Yeah, come on. Sometimes setting up in church, people not sober. You'd be surprised when stuff come with people setting up in church. <laughs> you got to be alert. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, Satan attacks people more in church than they do out in the street sometimes. Yeah, man, people up here get mad at me while I'm preaching. I've been thinking long. Sometimes the devil gets you so frustrated, you get up and walk out. You wouldn't have got up and you've been at peace with God. Satan influenced you to get up. Y'all better be glad I didn't calm down because I started to stop them for a while. I go to them, sit down. Oh, I did two or three times. Let them get mad up at me. I don't care. They're allowed to get shot or killed when you get on out there somewhere. You might be saving them from something. Because the devil wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy you. Hallelujah. So don't give place to the devil. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking. Somebody say seeking. seeking. What's he looking for? He's looking for people that's not walking in faith. He's seeking people that won't forgive. People that don't honor their mother and father. He's seeking people that will not walk in truth. He's seeking somebody he can devour. But the Bible says, whom resist steadfast in your faith, knowing the same afflictions accompanied by your brothers in the world. In other words, everybody going through something. Well, you ain't special. I said, man, that's the only one. I just know why I'm going to. You ain't the only one. You used to know how to handle yours. Oh. Everybody going through something. But see, you just don't know how to fight. So you think it's, that's why it's so hard on you because you're having a pity party instead of a pray party. I go through stuff too. Oh. Everybody go through stuff. Everybody go through stuff. But see, what happened is Satan wants to magnify your problem. You the only one. Then why are they treating you like that? How come they don't speak to you? How come? How come? How come? How come? <laughs> it's always a case of the how comes. How come I don't smack you upside the head? How come? <laughs> Amen. Satan is after your mind. People don't just do stuff. Got to be sober. God said you resist the devil, that means you can resist him. You got to be it. You got to, listen, so don't let the devil get advantage over you. All right, look at this. Now, Hebrew 12, 2. Watch still. Looking unto Jesus. Somebody looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that set before him and do it the cross, despite the shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus. Say, looking unto Jesus. There's a story about a man would test his dog's obedience. Anybody have like a pit bull or a dog you want to train him? He would test his dog's obedience. He put a piece of meat down in front of that dog and say, no! Put a piece of meat in front of a dog, boy, especially a pit bull or something. He'd say, no! And he had to, why? And he, had to, he finally learned the dog because he would, he would hit him and punish him if he got it. After a while, the dog learned what to do. The dog kept his eyes on his master because we looked at the meat. <laughs> the temptation was too strong. He couldn't stop from eating it, but he kept his eyes on his master. <laughs> so you keep your eyes on your master. The temptation won't overtake you. You got to learn how to keep looking under Jesus. When they want you to do something that's not right, look under Jesus. Look unto your master. When people tell lies on you, try to get you out the will of God, look unto Jesus. Amen. See what your master wants you to do. If you look at the master, you won't get involved in the temptation. Yeah. You'll be biting at me. You'll be... <laughs> yeah, you 
we bite, won't you? Let me tell you, we used to be like, can I, can I, can I get through this? When I, was, when, I was a, when I was a young guy, when I was about 1920, we used to practice our words. Uh -huh. I go into a nightclub, and we get together, run our line. When a guy, we call pool. Come on, stay with me. With we, we pool a girl. Uh -huh. right. Come on, see, some of y'all been saved so long, y'all don't forget it. Come on, come on, help us out. But we would say, man, what you say to get to her? You know, you would pull them. See, they had to get their mind off of what they thought they were. And they had to, you had to pull them, paint a picture. You'd be at home sleeping on your mama's couch, dad, driving your daddy's car. But you tell a man you got a business and you got a Mercedes Benz and you got a Rolls Royce. You pull her because you got to make a flowery picture and you ain't got nothing. They say you ain't even got a, a window to pour it out of. Pot, you know what I'm talking about. But see, you, you have to use your line so you can pull them. Satan is pulling some of y'all. He's trying to run that line down on you. You'll be biting. Next morning, you don't know what the world, I don't know what I never, I don't know what I'll come on me like. You, you, got, you got pulled. And then the guys are laughing about it. They go back and write the line. I said, I'm going to use that line. Satan is doing the same thing on the body of Christ. He knows how to manipulate you, how to lie and cheat and make you think he's all of that. And you don't wind up knocked up, lost your mind, everything crazy because you fell for Satan's tricks. No wonder he didn't want me to preach this message because his tricks are exposed. You ain't got to yield to his tricks no more. I ain't buying his nickels no more. His wooden nickels don't work no more with me. I'm satisfied with who I got. I'm satisfied with who I am. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. I don't need what you got. Hallelujah. Don't get a devil no room. Let's close out with this. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. Whoever controls the mind controls the man, don't they? Though we walk in the flesh, we don't walk in the flesh. Even though we're in these physical bodies, your enemy is not a human being. As a matter of fact, Satan don't even want to know he exists. He's real. You see? He is real. That first three, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. That's why you got to submit yourself to God. So when you submit yourself to God, that means you make yourself available to God. When you submit to him, you put yourself under his control. For who you yield to, will be your master. So you got to understand how it works. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not come, but mighty through God to the pulling down stronghold. See, God does not leave us at the defenseless, at the mercy of the devil. Our weapons are not man-made. They're mighty. Say they are mighty. They're mighty. But how many know the most mighty weapon you can use won't work if you don't know how to use it? See, I don't care how strong the weapon is, if you don't know how to use it. See, the military got to know how to take it apart, put it together in the dark. How many know how to put the word of God together? That's your weapon. See? I mean, whew, pull out my, sh my sword out. The devil come in, <laughs> thou shall not steal. You know, cut the devil. Use your word so accurately, you cut the devil's head off so smooth until he won't know his head been cut off until he shake it. It, it fall off then. See, you, when you, phew, I'm a son of God. Phew, he sent his word and healed me. I'm more than a phew, conqueror. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. See, that's the sword of the spirit. It's the sword of the human spirit. Pull a scripture out like Jesus. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. Him only shall thy serve. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See, you got to know how to whoop the word back out on the devil. <laughs> Amen. See, and it works good. A lot of times you have been out, like we went out, sometimes go out in public. And uh, come here, Emma, how it works. See, if you're sanctified and living for your wife, come here, Burgess, I want you to walk by. Just walk by. See, if you trust the Lord, see, you won't, you won't just... You see what I'm saying? Something will pull you around if you ain't worried it up. 
You know what I'm saying? And then you be trying to act holy. And so you can cop you a look. But when you word it up, some on somebody, it, it won't be no, no temptation because I'm satisfied with what I got. See, Satan will use some, he'll say, Satan ain't going to come to you in no red suit, no pick for. No, he going to send us something pretty. Some, he'll send you a tall, dark, and handsome guy smelling good. You know what I'm saying? See, you got to know how to fight. Satan is after your marriage, after your home, after your children, after your life. You got to know how to fight. I keep in perfect peace whose mind stayed on him. Anything that comes to the will of God, Satan is trying to get you to stop trusting God. He can't defeat you till he gets you out the will of God. He got to deceive you. Got to make you think it ain't working. Who told you it wasn't working? What are you going by? What signs? Let's look at, look at that verse number six. And well, let's look, at, let's look at five and six. He said, cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, every child of God needs to know how to cast stuff down. Everything that comes through your head, you don't have to think it. It's not a sin to think an evil thought. It's a sin to follow up on it. Thoughts will come through your head. Sometimes you'll have a, a thought in your head and shake your head. Ugh, I don't want to think that. You, know, you ever done it before? But somebody just, just shake your head. Ugh, I don't want to think that. See, something you have to do that several times. Because he, he got to make you follow. He can't do nothing until he saw a dart at your mind. You're going to die. You know, I thought you was healed. You're going broke. Cast, yeah, cast that down. I keep in perfect peace on the word of God. You shall live and not die. He sent his word and healed me. I'm more than a conqueror. See, who controls the mind? Controls the man. What's on your mind throughout your day? What are you thinking about when you're going through? Are y'all getting this? All right, I, I promise you, give me just a few more minutes. Verse number six, having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now watch this. You got to be ready to avenge yourself. You got to punish disobedience. In other words, you got to put it back on the devil. Make the devil hate the fact that he messed with you. When Jesus heard that John the Baptist got his head cut off, Jesus went wild. He went to casting out the devil, laying hands on the sick, turning over every stronghold he could. See, see, sometimes Satan will do stuff to make you mad at people when you should be mad at him. See, the devil's trying, go ahead and start blessing somebody. You know, give them, a, be in, give them a hug. Let them know you love them. See, sometimes when we get mad, we take it out on people. No, 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 you take it out on the devil. See, you, 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 don't, you don't sin when you get mad at the devil. You can cuss him out and ain't sin. See, when you cuss me out, you done messed up. Ah. But when you cuss out the devil, see, oh, yeah. you, you, I curse you, demon. I command you to take your hands off my, my baby, my child, my mama, my sister, my brother. See, we get mad at the people. But he said this now. When you get your obedience is learned. Now watch this now. Watch this. Get this now. Have a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, when you learn the difference, how you know when is it fulfilled? I'm closing with this. When you learn the difference between the voice of God and the voice of Satan. See, many of us have not learned the difference between the voice of God and the voice of Satan. Why do you need a difference? So you know what to cast down. See, if God's speaking to you, I want you to give $100 in the offer today. I cast you down, Satan. The devil ain't going to tell you to get a <laughs> You think the devil going to tell you to sow? Uh-huh. But see, we, see we, we don't know the difference between the voice of God and the voice of the devil. So we cast out some good stuff when we should know what to keep. But see, when you know the difference, then you can retaliate. You can avenge yourself. See, you can overcome the devil because I know the difference now. You see. So it takes time to, to, to know the difference. So it's time to take the enemy, take the fight to the enemy. God gives a spirit of fear, power, love, and a sound man. It's time to take the fight to the devil because we have a walls around our salvation. We have a fortified city, and it's built on praise. See, Philippians 4.4 4 said, Rejoice in the Lord always, 
And again I say rejoice. See, rejoice always. And again I say rejoice. See, it's hard to rejoice when you're mad on the devil's lies. But it's easy to rejoice when you know what God is saying. You see, when you know the truth. Paul said rejoice again, I say rejoice. Verse 5, Philippians 4, 5, let your moderation be known. The Lord's at hand. Moderation means your kind disposition. In other words, if you believe in God, it'll show up on your face. If you believe in God, you're going to make it. There'll be a smile instead of a grin, a frown. See? It'll show, see, if you're confident, it'll show up. Because the Lord, say the Lord is at hand. How many know he'll never leave you nor forsake you? He responds to you. So therefore, let's go on how to bless him at all times. When it looks like it's not working, just stop. Say, wait a minute, I need to pray God right now. Just do that sometime and watch what the devil do. He'll start backing up. He'll turn it around. God will make it work in your favor. Verse number 6, Philippians 4, 6, and I'm finishing with this, 6, 7, 8. Be careful. Somebody say, be careful. Be careful. That means don't worry about anything. By prayer and supplication, with th with, 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 with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. See, let it be known to God. Don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about it because God loves you. You mean more to God than what you're going through. Okay, verse 7, and the peace. Look at that. So when we do our part, the peace will kick in. And the peace, see the peace, and. That means after you've done, done what you're supposed to do, the peace will kick in. And the peace that passes on said, keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. See, that's why you got to learn how to fight good fight of faith. See, Satan wants you to have a pity party, cuss and fuss, but when you praise God in the midst of it, the peace will come in. Because you gotta, you got walls around you. It is your praise that raises up your walls of protection around you because you have a strong city with walls of salvation, walls in the land of praise. See, God puts you in a city where you got to praise your way out. That's your basic weapon. As I close with this, verse number eight, this is my final close. Fine. There it is right there, finally. Didn't I tell you? Finally, brother, whatever things are true, what's the truth? The truth is I'm a child of God. The truth is God's on my side. Whatever is true, whatever is honest, I'm going to make it. Whatever is pure, just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever things of good report, I'm coming out, I'm going to make it. Look at that. They're being the virtue and the praise. Think. These things. See, you own this thing because you've already won. Your biggest weapon is your praise because you got walls around you that are fortified by your praise. Walls are what raises... Praise will raise up your walls. When you're depressed, it lets your walls down. <laughs> if you're going to win the battle, you got to praise God. Because praise fortifies your walls. It, the devil can't penetrate you. Stand your feet and give God a praise up in here. Don't patty cake him. Give him praise.